Tonight on Missing Persons Unit... Seen him at all? The search builds for missing dad, Grant Andrews. There's a million of these little camping areas up around here. And his children feel the pain. Hopefully, and I'll bring him home to you, eh? In South Australia, they called them Thelma and Louise. She actually came into the bedroom to get the suitcase, and at that time I woke up. They vanished from here, leaving behind 11 children between them. Two women have lived together and not a trace. Nothing has been heard from them since. An 18-year-old mum places a personal ad wanting a truckie with tattoos. It's just not any not to make contact, you know, and that, to me, is scary. Then disappears, leaving her husband and two toddlers behind. We're trying to locate the missing person. Okay. That person's uh, just hung the phone up. And has anyone seen Stanley the mechanic? It's quite unusual for someone to ring from a phone box on the side of a freeway, say that their own car's broken down, and then Heard of again. A distraught call, and no one's heard anything since. I just don't understand it. It's just not his character to disappear like this. Morning, everyone. Another busy day for everyone. A very busy day with 20 new reports just overnight. A mixed bag of cases today. Gary, we've got a 63-year-old man from Malgoa, We're out Western Sydney. He was meant to pick up his wife and daughter from Sydney Airport last night. Senior Constable Gary Bailey gets the case of Stanley Wallace. After his car broke down, he rang his family from the freeway north of Sydney, but that was 16 hours ago. He said his car had broken down, um, but he hasn't been heard of since. Liz's got one for you, an 18-year-old mum of two from out the Windsway, out West Sydney. Um, she's left two young children behind and her partner's very concerned for her. Senior Constable Liz Sakluna is given the strange case of missing mother Andrea Strick. Andrea placed an ad in a personals column saying she was a sexy young mum looking for adventure. Then she vanished. There's some information that she may be heading up to Queensland. And Steve, you're back out on the road today looking for missing dad, Grant. Grant's wife, Tracy, reported him missing last week when he didn't return from work and no one's seen him since. Let's hope we find him soon for the family sake. That's it, everyone. Let's have a great Thank day. You. At the South Australian Missing Persons Unit, a cold case gets a new investigation. Senior Constables Kate Helbig and Paul Tomlinson begin a new search for two runaway mums. The media called them Thelma and Louise. There were 11 children left behind. There were six in one family and five in the other, so the two youngest from each family were five years old. Joyce Eastwood was 33, Hazel Pope 32 when they arrived in Adelaide from England in 1968. But just two years later, they went to work and their 11 children never saw them again. Because it was so long ago, they may have been able to create a new identity for themselves. And another option is that they could have met with foul play. It's an awful lot of children to leave behind. So it is something a bit different than, than a lot of other cases. Back at the Sydney Missing Persons Unit. Hello. Hi, Janelle. Yes. That's only Councillor Patrick Condon from Missing Persons Unit. Pat's yes, calling Janelle, cool. the wife of mechanic Stanley Wallace, who vanished on the way to pick her up at Sydney Airport. Would you mind just pulling over just for, for the mobile reception so we don't lose Janelle you? and her son Darren have been searching the freeway for Stanley between Sydney and Newcastle. Where was he travelling from yesterday? Well, we, we don't really know. The only thing we know is that we had a phone call from him, or my son did, at about 10 to 4 yesterday. That call that, um, to tell the family he'd broken down was made almost 18 hours ago. No other family or friends in the Newcastle area? We have friends at Taree, but they haven't sighted him. They're travelling down as far as Raymond Terrace to have a look at that section of road. Where on the freeway are you now? How many minutes past Hornsby would you be? Maybe 20-odd k's past. Right, well, we're going to head off from Parramatta now. Yeah. And we'll meet you on the freeway. OK, then. OK. Bye. Bye. Pat and Gary are going to meet Janelle at a truck stop 20 kilometres north of Sydney. Mm. 
Meanwhile, here in South Australia, in the case of those missing mums, Joyce and Hazel, Kate hits the road to re-examine evidence. We only found out about this case some two years ago. 37 years after Joyce and Hazel went missing, their families have finally filed an official report. Now, the Missing Persons Unit has to discover exactly what happened when the mums disappeared back in 1970. Hi, Janet. How are you going? OK, how are you? Good, thank you. Two of their 11 children, Joyce Eastwood's daughters, Janet and Angela, have spent decades looking for the mums without any luck. I just th thought we might go through your statements again today. There's just a few things I wouldn't mind uh, going over again. Can you tell me your memory of the morning she left? Do you have a clear recollection of that? Mum got up to go to work. Um, she actually came into the bedroom to get the suitcase and at that time I woke up um, and she sort of got the suitcase down and, and just told me to go back to sleep. Um, and I, I remember a lot of noise outside, as in people talking um, and the footsteps um, on the gravel. Um, and then the car leaving. So that was sort of pretty much it. Meanwhile, back in New South Wales, Pat and Gary are heading north of Sydney to search for mechanic Stanley Wallace. He broke down somewhere on this freeway 18 hours ago. It's quite unusual for someone to go missing on a freeway. In my experience, generally people will go missing from their home. It's quite unusual for someone to ring from a phone box on the side of a freeway and say that their own car's broken down and then not heard of again. Even more confusing is why Stanley was in this area in the first place. He should have been at Sydney Airport picking up his wife, 60 kilometres in the opposite direction. There's no explanation at all from the family as to why uh, Mr Walsh is up here. Uh, there's family at Port Macquarie. Uh, he hasn't been there at all. There's friends at Taree. He hasn't been there. It's very strange as to why he's up this area. Still on the freeway between Sydney and Newcastle. I want to ring the uh, missing person's son and see where he actually got this call from his father. Pat's trying to locate the emergency phone Stanley used to call his son, Darren. Can I be ringing in at 4 o'clock? Yep, uh, Optus is the carrier. Back at the missing persons unit, Mandy Gale starts the phone trace. The phone number for the son yep. is 9788. If Mandy can match a number on Darren's mobile to the emergency phone on the freeway, Thanks very much. they'll have Stanley's exact last known location. Then, further up the road, Pat meets up with Darren and his distraught mum, Janelle. They've spent the last day driving up and down this freeway without any success. I just don't understand it. It's just not his character to disappear like this. I don't know. That never happened before? No, it's never happened. In 35 years, we've been together, so... We've worked together, we've travelled together, we've done a lot of things together. There's no reason for it to happen. You try and think positive, but you just keep trying, you keep thinking of the worst. Like, yeah. you know, what if he's sick in the car or someone's hit him walking up the road? You don't know. It worries me. Back in South Australia, Angela, there's enough, just one part here in your <laughs> statement I thought I wouldn't mind just going through with you again. Kate's realising their disappearance could have been planned. In just the last few weeks before they left, you remember Mrs Pope and your mum? Yeah. Talking about wigs and mum thinking of turning her hair blonde. Mm, that's right. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? They used to quite often um, get together um, early in the evening. You know, we were asked, you know, what we thought that she might look like with blonde hair, so... The two mums, Joyce and Hazel, were acting more and more strangely in the weeks before they vanished. You went on about her collecting money in a handkerchief? Mm, that had been happening for quite a while. But why was Joyce collecting the money? I remember being told that, um, that or being told by Dad that he'd received a letter 
um, and that it was from a department store over in Perth. It was actually a bill signed Hazel Eastwood, a combination of the two mum's names. There was no other accounts that your father received, it was just that one that you remember. It's crucial new information because after four decades, Kate finally has the evidence that Joyce and Hazel may have run off together. It was shortly after that that Dad sort of sat us all down and said that, yeah, Mum wouldn't be coming back. Meanwhile, back at the truck stop north of Sydney... And we've rang all the service stations, done all the hotels. The more yeah, Gary digs, yep. the stranger this case becomes. Everything's been all right at home, isn't it? Everything's fine at home. It's probably the most... The happiest he's been in well, 35 years we've been together, so probably the best he's been is achieving things that he's, he's retired and he's yeah, doing things that he's. I was just going to say that he's retired and. Restoring uh, his cars and. He doesn't know anything, you know, he's, he's quite settled in his way and worked hard to get there, you know, and, yeah. and that's what he is, he's a worker. So, what, well, yeah, my initial reaction was that he's there still trying to fix the car, you know, because that's what yeah. he would do. It seems very strange, doesn't it, like just to make that call? Because I'm sure he turned around and he said he was outside Hexham. So that's as far as I got and I dropped out. But when Janelle and Darren checked the freeway near Hexham, there was no sign of Stanley or his car. What more worries me is someone else or something like that that's happened or something that he, mm. he couldn't turn around and control. Didn't you have know? control over, yeah. Like his health, you know, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah. But just hope. Right. Just hope, yeah. Just got to think, keep thinking the best, think positive. Meanwhile, in Adelaide, police are taking another one of the 11 children, Joyce's son Michael, on a journey back in time. Michael was just seven when his mum disappeared. Now, at 43, he's asked police to take him to the meatworks where his mum and Hazel Pope worked. Michael, this is where your, your mum worked and uh, this is where she was last seen. 37 years ago, Joyce and Hazel drove here with Michael's older brothers, Jared and Barry, who also worked here. So this is where the uh, luggage was dropped off? We believe so. That's the security officer. The guard would have been there. The boys went into work, but the women had other plans. So they would have parked the car <laughs> and come back and got the suitcases from the security office. Yeah. They called a taxi, loaded their bags and drove off to start their new life. When the boys had finished work that afternoon, they came down and, and they were sitting on the bonnet of the car waiting for them to come back at the completion of their shift and they waited and eventually they decided to walk home thinking perhaps they were both uh, working overtime. Michael's first visit to the old meatworks brings the memories of his missing mum flooding back. It's like just hitting uh, blank walls all the time and, and closed doors. Yeah, we just haven't found Trace not here or any of them, really. And, uh, and for both families to have closure would be really good, too. North of Sydney, 20 hours into the search for Stanley Wallace, and it's not looking good. At the local police station, Gary and Pat a photo there, mate. Yes. decide it's time to issue a National Missing Persons Bulletin. Back on the streets, family friends Gail and Rod have joined the search. We're very close friends with Stan and Janelle, known, known each other for over 20 years, and um, they're always there to help us, so we came straight away as soon as we could. Rod had to just get off work and, and we're straight down to help out as long as they need us. They've just combed every inch of the highway along the coast south of Taree, but still haven't seen Stanley or his car. Well, the car's not out in the street, so he's obviously got it going again. Well, you'd think. Be positive. Do the police make calls to the hospitals at all or is that up we, to you? We've done that this morning. They've yeah, checked the whole Hunter region. Yeah. Um, he hasn't been admitted to anywhere under his name or anything like that, and there's no one meeting his description okay. or anything that's like that, so it's, that's good news in that's a way. Good news. If you want us to look anywhere else, if you get any 
your yep. thoughts, then I'll come ring down you. and ring get you. looking. Thanks again. Thanks a lot. Okay. okay. All right. All Darren and Janelle can do now is keep searching and hoping. Back in South Australia, Kate's driving 450 kilometres to Mount Gambier to interview Joyce's brother. I took three statements back in February and uh, I just want to have another chat to Ron to see if there's anything more that's come out. Last year, Ron told police he actually saw his sister a few years after she disappeared in Adelaide. How are you, sir? Kate's hoping Ron might remember something else that will give them the breakthrough they need. I don't know what's going down uh, the main street there, right? King William Street. King William Street. And about two seats up from the front, this lady, and we was about three seats from the back on the same side as her, not on, you know, and uh, I'm looking down, I said to you, didn't I? That looks like Ella Joyce. And Maureen says, uh, shall I go up? And uh, what do you call it? Anyway, the next stop, the bus stopped, she pressed the button, it stopped, and she got off. She never once looked back at us. And uh, I was waiting for the bus to pass to see, you know, on the footpath. Mm. But uh, she'd gone by the time the bus had got, got around. She must have nicked around the corner, gone into a building or something. Mm, but she was gone. I'd like to sit down and talk to her and just find out what, what went wrong and why she did what she did. Because it's not in, it's not her to do that. She wouldn't just go and leave her kids. I'm convinced she, that there's something there you know, I want to I wanna find, yeah. And there's only one person that can give me that, and that's her. Finally, after 24 hours of searching, Stanley Wallace has turned up kilometres away from where they thought he'd be. Just feel the weight being lifted off his shoulders, and Mum's up there, she couldn't be more happy if she tried, and the rest of the family's all really, really good. He was admitted here, to Borkham Hills Hospital not long after he went missing. What happened? Mate, well, I still don't know positively as yet. I know he's had an operation. He's had a bowel operation and all that sort of stuff. He's got the morphine. He's got all the drips hanging out of him at the moment. He doesn't actually remember getting here. He remembers parking the vehicle out the front there for a while, but that's about as much as I got out of him so far. And I won't sort of know until tomorrow, until he probably is a bit less drowsy. As shaken as he is, Darren can still express his love. As they say, you're not a man until you man, yeah, your father's gone. So and sort of today I felt like I was halfway there, but now you know I feel like I'm his boy again. So that's how I feel, you know, and I couldn't be happier, mate. You know. Thanks, Darren. Come on, mate. Good day for you. Appreciate it. Give you a call. Give me some call. Give us a call. Let us know what you're happy with. You know, appreciate the time, guys. Fantastic result. Family and happy. We're happy. Great result. Back at the missing persons unit, Hello. a fresh case kicks off. Hi, Daryl. It's Senior Constable Sukluna from the missing persons unit. How are you going? Oh, <laughs> could be better, mate. Liz yeah. has begun her search for missing 18-year-old mum, Andrea Streak, who disappeared after placing a personal ad for a truckie. She had a bit of a strange phone call on Friday night. And, um... Just sort of broke down after it, like... Liz is talking to Andrea's de facto Daryl, who reported her missing. But when she got off the phone, I said, you were talking to a fella, and, and that's when she sort of broke down and, and started, and, you know, she said, I don't want to hurt you, I don't mean to hurt you, and I said, well, where did this fella come from? And she said, I put an ad in the paper, and... So she told you that she put an ad in the paper? Yeah, yeah, and I didn't even sort of, sort of take much notice of it. Can you just tell me a bit about this ad? Just an 18 year old mum. Um, loves, loves um, drives, loves pubs, loves uh, tattoos. Um, Is that her? Yeah, 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 she's fanatical about tattoos. Uh, and it just said, looking for Aussie truck driver or something, age 20 to 40. All right, well, look, we'll pop up very shortly yep, yep. Um, and have another chat with you and just get some more things that we might not be able to get over the phone. Yeah, yeah. But, um, oh, look, well, until until we speak, yeah, take care with the kids. I will do, yes, yes. And, um, Trying to keep it together. All right, then. All right. I'll, I'll see um, a little bit later yeah, on. Yeah, I'll see you a little bit later on. OK, thank Thanks you. Thanks for that. Bye. Bye. 
Well, Andrea's a missing 18-year-old uh, girl. She's got two kids, uh, both under the age of two. Her de facto partner's 46 years old, so there's some years between them. It's not so much her age that's, that's the issue. It's more the fact that she's placed an ad in a newspaper uh, and she's taken off. We don't know who is. We don't know if she's actually OK, if she's alive. So we're very worried about her. Back at the unit's headquarters... Hello. Yeah, Daniel. Yeah. Steve's looking for missing dad, Grant Andrews. He's on the phone to a camping store in the Hunter Valley, where Grant tried to use his credit card the day he disappeared. Oh, mate, yeah, and I remember this bloke exceptionally well, actually. Yep. Grant got a phone call. In our last program, Grant's wife, Tracy, reported him missing. It's the only thing I know that's been worrying him is his job and money. So the missing persons unit immediately rang Grant's bank to check if he'd withdrawn any money. I found out that uh, he's actually accessed his uh, credit card and made a purchase at a camping store. It was an important clue. Face Vader rings a bell, yes, for a mount of hiking gear, camping gear, for supposedly for a son coming in from overseas. But that was a lie. Grant and Tracy don't have a son. No, not to my knowledge. Not unless he had him before he met me. So naturally, she feared the worst. What do you mean by strange? Today, Steve has even more information. He like wanted to buy bulk and sort of like get out of here as quick as possible. Right. The day okay. Grant so disappeared, just... he tried to make a second purchase of camping equipment. But with his card maxed out, the purchase was knocked back. I said to him, you know, basically, what are you going to do? He said, I'm just going away. He didn't say what era? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Okay. Basically, he was very vague on that sort of thing. He yep. just said he was going away. He needed some things for night night um, stuff. Right. And that's what he brought the headlamps for. Yep. for night, night fishing, actually. Night fishing? Yeah. Okay. So Steve and Mandy immediately head north to check local camping sites. Meanwhile, at home, Tracy tries to explain it all to their two daughters. They've already found that Dad's accessed his money. They know probably where, I don't know. They didn't tell me any of that, but they know. And hopefully they're hot on his trail. And I'll bring him home to you, eh? They miss their dad, you know, and I can't tell them where he is or guarantee that he's all right. I don't know. So, especially the little one, she doesn't deal with it as best as the others. So, and she's a bit scared of Dad's ever coming home. We don't really love you, do you? Yes. Meanwhile, Liz and Pat are on their way to interview 18-year-old Andrea Streaks de facto. It's a dangerous one. We want to get out there as quick as we can. She's possibly with a stranger and we don't know what's going on, so... Andrea vanished three days ago after putting an ad in the paper saying she's single, sexy and loves tattoos. She hasn't made contact with her family, which is very out of character. We're worried that she may have met up with someone, um, that foul play may be involved. So something's going on there and we need to get to the bottom of it. At the same time, acting on the tip-off from the camping store... What a beautiful spot. Yeah. Steve and Mandy have rushed to this isolated site... Doesn't look like his car's ..on here. the New South Wales Not north the coast. There's a few tents, though. I guess we can Maybe show them the can, photo uh, and have go a go talk to anyway. a few of the other campers. Yeah. See if they've well, uh, seen him at all. Have you seen him? No, I don't think so. Uh, no, I didn't say I have. No, definitely not. Seen him at all? No. No? Cannot, okay, then. Cannot place him here, mate. No. Yep, no worries at all. Thank you very much, you know, mate. I am a local, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. You've never seen him, Maria? No, mate. Yeah. No. I'd know that sort of face. Still but... pick him to be the sort of guy that's sort of further in the bush. Yeah. Probably be somewhere where it's a bit rougher yeah. to get to. And if Grant's gone bush, he'll be even harder to track down. There's a million of these little camping areas up around here. Like yeah. ones off, off road, cleared that's space, he could be anywhere. So it looks like a long day for Steve and Mandy, but heartbreaking for Tracy and the girls. I'd like to ask anyone with any information about my husband to please contact the 
police and the missing persons unit so we can find him straight away. And Grant, if you're watching, please come home. In the case of missing 18-year-old mum, Andrea Streak, Liz and Pat meet Andrea's de facto, 46-year-old ex trucky Daryl. So, I only got... He's terrified the mum of these two young boys has come to harm. She's such a, a beautiful person, you know, she's a very friendly nature. Um, if she's not in the right frame of mind, you know, there's plenty of creatures out there that take advantage of people. I'm really sorry. Yeah, it's all right. It's a bit tough. It's all right. Daryl's world caved in the day after Darcy and Charlie's mum vanished. He read this personal ad from the teenage mum wanting to meet a truckie aged between 20 and 40. As soon as I read it, I knew it was her. I knew that it was her ad. Um, and it did, it stung me big time. Just... That's when he realised who Andrea was secretly no, talking to on the phone the no, day before she, she disappeared. And I just said, you're talking to a fellow then. And she just, from there, from that point on, she just started to break down and, and cry. And, you know, and, um, that's when she sort of said, you know, you guys are trying to control me and mum and dad control me, you control me sort of thing. And she went down to the room and packed a bag, just a small bag, um, and grabbed her makeup case and come out. And she was still standing there crying. And, so it showed, like I say, just like she was fighting with herself inside. And she even still kissed me and said sorry. And then went to the door and went out the door. It's, it's not her, you know. It's it's she loves these guys. Yeah. <laughs> While Steve's still searching campsites, back at the missing persons unit, there's been a breakthrough in the Grant Hello. Andrews case. Yeah, Gary Bailey, missing persons, uh, Tracy, how are you going? Gary Bailey's on the phone to Grant's wife, Tracy. I believe you, uh, you had a call from Grant last night. Yes, I did. Can they just sort of fill us in on that a little bit? I asked him where he was. He said he didn't know where he was. He was in the middle of nowhere. Um, he sounded very distraught. And then I said to him, well, you're in a pay phone. Um, I said, look for a number on the pay phone. And he said, there isn't a number, and just said he can't come home, and that just to keep his, his girls safe. One good thing, anyway, at least you, um, you know that he's, you know, he's alive. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, you uh, keep your head up, and uh, hopefully we can uh, get to okay. the bottom of it soon, all right? Yep. Thanks for so me. now the race is on to find Grant before he moves again. What I'm going to do now is get on to the... Uh, local police and uh, just see how they're going. Apparently they're going to put in a uh, phone trace to see if we can locate where this phone box is, which would be good. Um, and then we can see where we go from that. I'm also going to uh, do some checks on the, on the bank account again to see if he's sort of taking any money out. Because if he's moving around, he's got to be using fuel, so he needs money. So I'll put that in again this morning. Back at missing mum, Andrea Streak's house. She loves trucks. Um, she has a fascination for trucks. Three days after she left her two toddlers for a truckie, her de facto Daryl is still searching for reasons. What's happening is not in his nature at all. She hasn't got a, a nasty bone in her body. She... She knows how much we'd all be hurting. And I know she wouldn't want that. It's probably hurting her too. No doubt. Big time. I just can't understand no contact. There's no one can. It's just not her. It's just not her. So this is the first time she's been away from the boys? Oh, yeah. yeah she would just not ever been more than, you know, a day's notice away from them all. It's always oh, hard no. going through something like this. Yeah. But just as Liz and Pat are about to leave, I'll give you a Andrea's mum, Kim, arrives. I've just got a message from her. Andrea has finally made contact. Do you want to come over this way? Sorry. Yeah. Back at the missing persons unit, Gary's been tracing the payphone Grant rang his wife from. She got off the phone to... Uh, Clayton Croyd, please. 
Um, in relation to Grant Andrews, um, a phone number that apparently run from a phone box up there. Yep. They've tracked that down to a place in the, called Nebo, which is way up to Buggery somewhere in uh, Queensland. Um, the Nebo police have gone around there apparently, sort of checked around there, and uh, but they have unable to be uh, find him at this stage. The police net is tightening but there's still a long way from finding Grant. Uh, he's driving and driving. Maybe he's just going to get going. Or... Yeah, who knows what he's going to do. Back at the streak home, after three long days... Well, my husband's had the mobile on. He doesn't know how to use it properly. ..a message they've been hoping for. OK. So I, I'm OK, I'm fine. Please stop the police from looking for me. I just need time to sort myself out. Please just look after the boys for me and <laughs> tell Daryl I'm not with another man and I'm safe. I'm just getting some help I need. <sighs> I'll be OK. I just need this now. Love you all. Andy. It'd be nice to know where she's getting that help from. She knows she mm. can always come to me That's for right. help. Well, what do you mean? Andrea is safe and well. For Daryl and his two little boys, the text is at least a start. Please ring. Just please let someone know you're all right. It's hard. I just, I wanted to, to know she's safe. I wanted to contact someone, mum, dad, anyone. Just ring someone, let us know you're all right. We can work it out from there. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Meanwhile, in the Hunter Valley, north of Sydney, it's now two weeks since Grant went missing. All his invalid wife, Tracy, has to hold on to are the memories of the man she has adored for over 20 years. People have asked me, is there another woman, you know, is there gambling debts, is there? No, he doesn't do stuff like that. I mean, if there's another woman, he's damn good because he's kept her hidden pretty well <laughs> and I don't know where he'd find time. The only word Tracy's had from Grant is that one call from North Queensland. Yes, Tracy's very cranky, very cranky, very upset. Not sure I even want to see him back here, but I need him to come and talk to his kids. That's what we need and sort it out. And without Grant's income, things have gone from bad to worse for Tracy and the girls. I rang Santaling and they told me to come in. They'd give me an emergency payment. Now I have to file for separation. So we do that. Now, because I'm still legally attached to him and they can't verify with him, I'm entitled to $400 a fortnight. Rent in this place is $480 a fortnight. So, you know, things are hard, but we're managing. Today, Tracy's had an injection for her chronic rheumatism, okay. so she's more mobile than usual. But it's becoming increasingly difficult for her to keep it all together. Did I ever think I'd find myself in this position? No. If I pull apart, what over they got? And Mum's the strong one, so if Mum loses it... Yeah. Back in Sydney, 18-year-old runaway Mum Andrea Streak has finally been spotted. These detectives in Windsor have been tracking Andrea's ATM withdrawals. She's been seen at the uh, Beresfield Express up near Newcastle, right. where she's made a purchase. Up there, we've also got a, we've got some pretty good CCTV footage on it, which matches her to a T. Did we find mm -hmm. out um, how much she she's taken out? Yeah, basically, at 9:57 up at Beresfield, she's taken out uh, $16.15, where she's purchased a pack of smokes yep. and uh, a Gatorade drink. Prior to that. At 17.18, uh, at Westpac at Newcastle, she's taken out $100. Right. And prior to that, at 12.38am, she's taken out $20 at Blacktown. OK, well, so at least she's got some money with yeah. her anyway. And there's yet another new development. Taxi 
She actually spoke to the cleaner mm -hmm. and asked him whether or not he's a truck driver and whether he'd be prepared to take her to Scone. He indicated to her that he isn't, but if she wants to go out and ask the truck drivers around, and that basically the CCTV footage then shows her going out into the car park and speaking with truck drivers. This information matches the ad she placed wanting to meet a truckie with tattoos. It's a bit of a worry though, <laughs> considering that, you know, she's she's 18, she's had, mm. she's got two kids, um, you know, and she's just taken off mm. and has left her kids at yeah. home and definitely out of character. I'm worried that she might be suffering from postnatal depression or, or mm. some sort of stress. And while Andrea is probably heading west with a truckie, her mum makes a plea. Andy, just please make contact, not by text message, but please just make contact with us or with Daryl and just let us know you're okay. You're not in trouble and we're here for you. Whatever you want, we will help. Whether you need to stay away for a little while or you want to come home, we're all here for you, OK? Because we love you. In the earlier case of mechanic Stanley Wallace... Had to see Mr Wallace at his home. Uh, he's been discharged from hospital. Um, still got no idea as to why he's admitted to hospital. So I had to have a chat to him and find out what caused him to end up there. Police are confused by the bizarre circumstances surrounding his disappearance. Looking good now. You reckon I look a bit better than what I did before? You, you didn't look too good at all when we last saw you. It turns out Stanley was stricken with a life-threatening problem with his bowel. Yeah, he just got a, a bowel obstruction, so she, so she tells me. And, uh, you know, it, it just felt like someone had a balloon or a hand pump and just pumping it up, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like... I think panic got into more or less um, the whole thing, and uh, from then on in, uh, it just the situation just got worse and worse. And even though he couldn't stand, Stanley somehow managed to drive himself to hospital. Yeah, you know, that, that's the most stupid part of the whole thing. You know, that is absolutely stupid doing that. But uh, we all think we can handle our own problems, and I'll, I'll be right. I'll, I'll sort this out. You know, but. Uh, on arrival, he was delirious and couldn't tell anyone who or where he was. To anybody else out there, yeah, I'm telling you now, there's only one pun to do, and that's for him, naught, 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 because they're the people that are here to look after us, and uh, I'm sure they would have did a much better job than me. Janelle's now holding on tight. She knows that Stanley is a lucky man. I think the heart started running at a normal rate after that once we found him. It, it wasn't running too well before that, but um, I don't know, just relief. Just cried for relief, I think, more than anything else. Very good. Yeah. Yep, mm. lovely. Thank you. Hey. Good to have you, home. Yep, it's okay. good to be back home and feeling reasonably fit. Don't cry. No. You're not allowed. <laughs> not allowed. <laughs> not allowed, OK. All right. Thank All you. Right. Hey. Back in Adelaide, in the four-decade-old case of missing mums Joyce Eastwood and Hazel Pope... Clearly the disappearance has, was planned. While Kate's new lead has gone nowhere here in Adelaide, there's still that link to Perth and the bill possibly signed by both women. You can look at it, uh, several scenarios, I suppose, and one of them could be that they've uh, gone off to uh, create a, a new life for themselves. It might be that they have been able to somehow manage unofficially to get back to England. That's your, your mum and dad there on the right. Yep. They may have their reason for disappearing. I can see Michael and... But oh, try Michael. explaining yes. that to their 11 children. Um, I mean, me as a mother, I mean, I can't imagine walking away from my children. And um, which makes me wonder, is she still out there? There were those periods of, you know, anger and that that kind of thing, but I'd like to meet her. Yep. That would be good. I have got, you know, beautiful children, which are her grandchildren, and beautiful great-grandchildren, you know, that I'm sure would um, like to have a part of her in, in their lives too. Yeah. Meanwhile, the hunt for 18-year-old mum Andrea Streak has entered day four. 
and police are becoming even more concerned for her welfare. Hi. My name's uh, Senior Constable Chowdhury from... Windsor, Windsor detectives Windsor have Windsor traced Windsor. Andrea's call to okay, a truckie yeah, yeah. in central western call. New South Wales. Paul, is it? Yeah. Paul, I'm calling this number because I've made some uh, urgent phone inquiries. Yeah. Um, and we're trying to locate the missing person. OK. That person's uh, just hung the phone up. I'll try and... Uh, Bring him back. After three calls, it turns out Andrea has sent several messages to the truckie and police believe he may be the key to finding her. Paul. Yeah. I'm calling in regards to Andrea Streak. I'm a little bit shocked, a uh, little bit uh, astounded. Uh, the uh, male person that identified himself as Paul is obviously aware that police are after the missing person. Um, didn't seem too concerned. Hello. The person you have called is unavailable. I'm getting worried. Um, in the whole scheme of things, we still haven't really confirmed the welfare of uh, Andrea. Um, and uh, we really don't know where she is. Hello, Paul. Yeah. Mate, it's Senior Constable Chowdhury here. Would I be able to call you a bit later? Mate, it's, it, I really need to speak to you right now. So if you could just give me a, a minute, I'd be, I'd be grateful. Yeah. Okay. Very quickly now, um, I, you've indicated uh, that that you've received an SMS from from Andrea. Yeah, she said that she was going to Brisbane with a truck driver. Okay. Before we go any further, and, and it's. Every year, over thirty thousand people go missing. Have you seen 34-year-old Joanne Deason, who disappeared from Gembrook, Victoria, in 2003? Or 46-year-old Yu Kui Chen, last seen in Dulwich Hill, New South Wales, in 2000? And 43-year-old Kerry McKay, missing from Chinchilla, Queensland, in 2003? If you have any information, please call 1800 333 000.